All right, I warned you. Now the second episode starts off for Arsene, who's such a gentleman that he has to make sure that he has Ren's consent before he even saves him. Now Ren does need some time to think on it, I guess he didn't want to be a damsel in distress. Then I guess he's just like, fuck it, I am that right? It's pretty much like I'm saving myself. And when they go back to reality, they're caught by two teachers who I'm pretty sure are on a smoke break. Then Kamashita starts getting hella reckless, talking mad shit. I think he even starts getting spit on the side of Ren's face. Now Ren does look a little pissed off, but Kamashita's like, what man, you want probation? I dare you to hit me. I dare you, I double dare you motherfuckers! Now my guy finally does end up getting to class at around 1pm I guess, just to find out that everyone at the school is already talking shit about he's on probation. Which everyone already knows thanks to Kamashita. But luckily for Ren, An's got his back cause she knows it's all bullshit. But he only says one thing to her, nice to meet you, and everyone starts thinking that they're fucking each other. For it only that easy. And damn Sojiro, he didn't even give my man no lunch? Couldn't whip up no curry real quick for him? I mean, no one already likes this guy. I mean, now he has to sit there at lunch looking crazy as hell? I can see it. I can feel it. Focus. Hmm. I have something. It's somewhere. Now, a difference is in the beginning of the game, everyone's just talking shit about the guy. Like, man, I heard he carries a knife on him. Oh, yeah, I heard this guy's a piece of shit, right? And that's got to be the only reason why he's been bumping into everybody in the hallway, because he's probably just expecting them to move. Either that or he thought everybody was intangible like in the game. So we cut to gym class where we get some insight in Kamashita's logic. Where he thinks, I'll probably get some of this little high school pussy if I beat up on some kids here in the class. Shoot the J. Shoot it! Takes all of two seconds for Kamashita to get shook by just one look from the main character. They decide to switch him out for somebody else. You're mine! Yo! Yo! Mishima! And I think this scene was just added in the anime because I remember Mishima getting hit in the face in the game because this guy already has like new game plus levels of guts here. But he does earn some respect for it. Next we're like halfway through in on Ryuji's confidant. Now in the game these three guys actually come up to both Ryuji and the main character threaten to beat both of them up. But here in the anime I guess Ren just leaves him by himself. No, you don't get a rank up from eavesdropping. That doesn't count. Then again, my guy is on probation. I mean, even if they were fighting, if I was him, I wouldn't have jumped in either. I would have just told Ryuji to bob and weave. Really, man? No notes. All right, dumbass coon. Then we get a scene with An and Shio, where An actually tries to make Shio crack a smile. Nothing to do, and no hope of things getting better. But it doesn't work. He knows why her friend is depressed, but still when Kamashita gets there, she just dips on her friend. I guess Chris Brown already told us, these hoes ain't loyal. Now Kamashita beats up this girl because I don't want give him any. And I still don't know if I should feel bad or not, cause this girl has no bruises here in the anime. Either he's not hitting her hard, or she's like Wolverine's daughter. Not only that, Kamashita's like the king of the school. So the teachers, all the staff, and even the parents let them get away with all this shit because it, even though they know about it. But if you're Shio and you know your parents aren't gonna help and the teachers aren't gonna help, wouldn't you at least try to get some boxing lessons and make this motherfucker work for it if you got to fight his ass every day? Pow, right in the kitchen. Or at the very, very least sell it your friend. If I was Shio, I'd be like, oh, can you please give this dude a hand job? It's either me get punched in the face or you jerk the dick. I did a lot of research on this, and don't ask me where, but Ren is actually talking to the teacher about the 5,000 yen she charges. He just wants to make sure it's for all night and not just one hour. He just moved there doesn't have that much money yet. What would you like me to do? Smooth Ryuji. I'm sure she didn't hear that. Now when Ren goes to meet up with Ryuji, Ryuji's just like, hey, remember that place where I got bitch slapped? I broke my foot in his ass quickly and slapped his ass in his mouth. And almost died by a crazy looking Kamashita that looked like he went through Prince's closet. Let's go back there. 
Now I know this is needed to drive forward the plot, but neither one of them knows anything about the metaverse. How do Ryuji know that that would even affect reality? I mean, as far as Ryuji knows, that's like a portal to like a past universe or something, where that's really Suguru Esquire, the ruler of the Westerlands. Okay, now this abuse is funny, and it's fine because they're not even real. Now they casually walk their way through this dungeon until they meet the game's mascot, Morgana. And Morgana wants to make a deal. They help him get out of the jail cell, he helps them navigate through the palaces. Now Morgana is actually the one that tells the main character to make his deals with most of his confidants, which is funny because from their perspective they're really just hanging out with some kid, but they're actually forging some sort of demon contract. Now when Joker took his mask off here, I was really hoping for him to absorb one of those shadows. But he doesn't, he actually just falls down, which is surprising because I was hoping for at least one scene in here where one of the shadows are asking him if they were on a honeymoon, where would Joker take one of them? Or in the scenes in the velvet room like this. Please! <laughs> wow, inmate, that's dark! Later on, they meet up with Shadow Kamashita again, who just ends up snitching on the real one. She had had some sort of dispute with the track team instructor, who I guess was probably trying to fuck some kids too. Now Kamashita gets back at the track teacher by breaking his Star Runner's leg, who's Ryuji. Kamashita is pretty much the reason why Ryuji is a delinquent. Without track in his life, he pretty much had nothing else in his school life. Then he awakens his persona. Now we actually get a fight scene that does end off with an all out attack. And I didn't think they are going to do that in the anime, but it's pretty dope. Check it out. <laughs> it's almost scary how good I am. Don't move now. Time for some bloodshed. Quiver and fear. Let's tear them apart. This is what reality is. Then Kamoshida's girl comes through. She gets Morgana and Ryuji both worked up. Woo! Yeah! Oh! 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 It's so beautiful. Ryuji does say he's jealous, but I remember that being one of the lines that the main character could say in the game. I thought it was funny that they gave it to Ryuji, but I think it would have been funny if they had the main character say it. But in here, like, he looks like he just doesn't even give a fuck. Now, after they leave, they just fast travel over to the beef bull shop. Now Ryuji's like, buddy, you heard everything about me, so you might as well tell me about you. So Ren tells him about how he stopped the rape, but I guess Kamashita just had his record leaked out, not details to the case. Then again, now that I think about it, it makes sense that Kamashita won't like him. If you're a teacher like him, the last thing you want is a student who comes in and stops reaps. You're just like, damn dude, you didn't even do nothing wrong. As a matter of fact, you're a goddamn hero. Which has to feel good for Ren, because the only other person who knows this story told him if you can't beat him, join him. 